Mazda makes some of the most fun new cars that you can buy today, and that's a hill that I'm willing to die on metaphorically speaking. Now, of course, the first car that comes to mind is the Mazda MX-5 Miata, but not everybody can justify owning a two-seat Roadster. So they also build this, the 2024 Mazda 3, and this particular car happens to be the higher output, sportier turbo model that they produce, and it's the Premium Plus package. So it's the essentially the top trim model, and it's the car that we'll be focusing on today. Now, the same things that make the Miata and the Mazda 3 fun to drive and so charismatic can also be found in Mazda for lack of a better word, regular cars that you can buy today. So getting right into it, this is the Mazda 3, and the Mazda 3 is available in both hatchback and sedan forms. Today we have the hatchback, which starts at $25,600. Now, for the turbo model, which this one is here, you are going to have to pay some extra money. Essentially, they start with smaller engines and front-wheel drive and work their way up to this, which is the all-wheel drive high-speed turbo model. Specifically, starting with the exterior, this particular one is finished and machine gray metallic, which is this very nice metallic gray that presents itself very well. I love the massive Mazda badge we hear, big wide open grille, but the turbo also receives exclusive cosmetics. Specifically, if we look at this front bumper here, this comes out quite a ways in this gloss black. This sort of lower splitter here in the front is a turbo exclusive, along with this spoiler in the back that sticks out quite a bit more. The standard models have smaller versions of these spoilers, both the front and the rear, but it's it's much more obvious on the turbo models. Now, moving on to some of the other features in the front here, we do in fact have LED lighting for our headlights, but the taillights themselves are also LEDs. They also feature adaptive lighting, which means these headlights actually move. So as you move the steering wheel on the inside of the vehicle, the headlights will actually lead the steering wheel at night to help guide you and lead you in turn. So that's a fantastic safety feature. The other thing is the turbo is going to get bigger wheels. So in this case, we have these 18 inch premium wheels. We do, of course, have four-wheel disc brakes all around as well, and they look pretty good. They're nothing too crazy, nothing overly special, but they're there nonetheless. Go ahead and take a look at our mirrors here, which have this nice gloss black finish to sort of match some of the trim. We can even see some of the cameras below and the turn signals that are integrated into the lights. We do, of course, have keyless entry, which works fantastic on Mazdas. Over here, we do have a sunroof as well. We can see our little antenna. Of course, it's a four-door, whether you get the hatchback or the sedan model. And if we come to the back, we of course see the practicality of getting the hatchback models. In the back, we'll also see some of the all-wheel drive badging, a dual exhaust exit for our turbo four-cylinder, even the Skyactiv labeling is just an all-around general good-looking car. And of course, you can lift your hatchback to reveal your storage, which in this case has a protective cover for security, and you can see where you keep your camera gear. Just me? Okay. So we'll go ahead and close that, and that's a quick look at the exterior of the Mazda 3. So let's go ahead and move on to the interior of our Mazda 3. We go ahead and open the door. We can see we have this beautiful two-tone interior that is red and black, and the red is a perfect complement to our gray exterior. I quite like the way it looks. Obviously, we have these beautiful perforated leather seats because these are, in fact, heated, powered seats in the front. Now, the driver's side does get power lumbar support as well, which is a great feature, and it even features memory, which we can see our buttons for here, meaning you could set it up for multiple drivers so that it automatically adjusts, which is a great feature. The other point I want to point out, just for the sake of detail, Mazda's design in these cars is absolutely just fantastic. I mean, look at the different materials and everything really just blends together. Speaking of which, we can see one of the other benefits of going for the top of the line turbo model, and that's going to be this right here. This is a Bose speaker, and that's because we have the top of the line 12 Bose speaker system in this car, and it does sound absolutely fantastic. Now let's go ahead and hop in and take a look at what else we have going on in here. So we do have push button start, so we'll go ahead and start it up there. And then we can see everything come to life, some Mazda badges, including our little Mazda 3 there in the center. And we've got a variety of beeping until it'll set off here in a sec. All right. So what all do we have? Well, in the front of the driver, we have a digital display, even though it's trying to look analog. This is in fact all digital, so you can see that it looks just like gauges, but you can pull up some various information on the fly there, like miles per gallon. Of course, some of your different information, like your cruise control info as well. And it's all easily accessible through some of the buttons on the steering wheel with a tack on the left side there. And of course, our sort of dummy gauges here on the right for our coolant temp and our gas gauge. So fairly easy, easy to read, 
seat, and you even have the heads-up display in this car, which might be hard to see on camera, but that can also show you things like the speed limit sign, so you can actually see where you're at. It can show you the numbers set for the cruise control and even navigation stuff, so super helpful. It's super easy to read, and I really appreciate the heads-up display in these cars. The steering wheel itself is fairly obvious in terms of what buttons we have. Everything is very easy to tell the difference between the various buttons, so you don't even have to look at it to use it most of the time. Cruise control buttons here on the right with obviously some of our different selects. And then over here on the left, we have a lot of our management buttons, volume controls, and even some of our cell phone activation buttons. We do have stocks in the typical fashion here in the back and a nice leather wrapped heated steering wheel, which is nice to have. And you'll even notice some paddle shifters actually behind here on the back that can be used to, of course, manually shift the car if you wanted to drive it in a sporting manner. Now, moving to the center of the car, one of the interesting parts about the turbo model is that you actually get a bigger display. So that's a pretty big benefit if you like that type of stuff. That's a benefit of the higher turbo model. Now, this also comes with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are wireless. Of course, a great thing to have in a car like this, and it helps to use if you don't like the physical buttons. This controls fairly far back, and you can notice with my back against the seat, I can't actually reach this. It's not a touchscreen because everything is managed through the physical buttons over here. Now, the nice thing about these is it's technically safer to use these than it is to use a touchscreen while driving. That's why Mazda sets it up like this, and it's pretty easy to tell what's what. You get used to it in no time, I can tell you, just from using uh, various Mazdas, and it's pretty easy to use. And here we even have our electronic parking brake and even our brake hold so pretty easy to use there below that we do in fact have our climate control system along with our hazards our heated seat button controls and we even have our heated steering wheel controls so all that is very nice very easy to use and of course you can set it up with dual zone climate control so that your passenger can set their own controls Below that, we do have a Qi wireless charger. We do, in fact, have two cup holders, which are kind of in an awkward spot. They kind of sit underneath this overhang, so taller drinks may not fit. Then we have our shifter. Now, the thing I like about this shifter is it's like a physical shifter. So you have no problem identifying what gear you're in. Some of the modern cars with the sort of select switches, it can be a little bit hard to get into neutral sometimes or even figure out what gear you're in necessarily. But this is really straightforward. Flick it over and now you're in the manual mode. We do, of course, have a sport button as well. So you can notice that it turns on and off there in the gauge cluster, nothing too crazy. All that sport mode's really gonna do is it's just gonna hold out the engine and transmission revs just a little bit more to try to make the car feel more responsive. So great if you're gonna be using it in the canyon, it's not gonna help your fuel economy, so you're not gonna wanna use it unless you're really intending to be sporty. Now obviously, we're gonna have some more storage under here, including some more charging ports and just general usability. So that's a nice feature as well. But a quick look at the interior, nothing too too crazy. We of course have our mirrors and even our sunroof set up, which is power tilt adjustable as well. And then you can see the back seat as well, which it doesn't have the most legroom of ever any car I've ever been in, but it's not, you know, you have the practicality of it if you really want it, but it's not really going to fit adults very comfortably. But that's a quick look at the interior. So under the hood is the top of the line powerhouse, the Skyactiv G 2.5 liter dual overhead cam turbo four cylinder engine. Now the base rating is 227 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. However, on 93 octane, this engine actually bumps the power up to 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. But there's a big disclaimer with that. I mentioned 93 octane. Now, if you live on the West Coast like I do, specifically in California and any states that get their gas from California, unfortunately, you're going to have a hard time finding 93 octane. So that includes us here in Arizona. But if you do live in a state, well, you can get more power and therefore more value out of your Mazda 3. And I think that's pretty cool. It does it automatically readjust the engine tuning on the fly to produce more power. So that's a very cool thing about the Mazda 3. Uh, this engine in particular, the turbo uh, 2.5 liter four cylinder, is actually a fairly standard engine. You can find it in a lot of the SUVs and just a lot of the different Mazda vehicles that are available because it's a very good tried and true powertrain. Now, this engine is paired with a six-speed sport mode automatic transmission. So that's a real transmission with a torque converter, not a CVT or anything like that. So that's a great thing to find. Of course, course going to be very reliable. Also found in other Mazdas. And in this particular case, the turbo is actually all wheel drive only. If you get the lower versions of the Mazda 3, that's going to be front wheel drive. But in this case, we have active all wheel drive with torque vectoring to help manage the all wheel drive system. Now, this car is also
also fairly fast. It does weigh 3,397 pounds, but it can do zero to 60 in 6.4 seconds, a quarter mile in 14.1 seconds, and it has a limited top speed of 134 miles per hour. So it's not a race car by any stretch of the imagination, but it'll get up and go when you need it to. Now let's talk practicality and move to fuel economy. This has an EPA rated 23 miles per gallon city, 31 miles per gallon highway, and a combined range of 26 miles per gallon. Now, given that it has a 12.7 gallon fuel tank, this will have an average range of around 330 miles. But I can tell you from driving it that if you're easy on it or even spending a lot of time on the highway, you can definitely exceed those gas mileage uh, restrictions and you can take this on road trips and save some money in the process. Everything is pretty straightforward. Obviously, our engine cover with our engine underneath, turbos in the back there. We do have our air filter box here so you could replace that yourself pretty easily and then the batteries behind that so fairly accessible to get to a lot of the main things that you would need in your Mazda 3. So what's it like to drive the Mazda 3? Well, the first thing I actually want to talk about is the steering. You see, it's a bit more engaging, a bit more dynamic than anything you'll find in any of the streetcars. And that's not specific to the Mazda 3. You'll find it in all of Mazda's SUVs. And obviously the Miata just takes that a step further and is always going to be better than the regular cars of Mazda's lineup. But it's still an enjoyable experience. Now, the Mazda 3, with the way the suspension is set up, is not necessarily a world beater. It was never meant to be that sporty of a car in the first place. But with this, you know, transmission powertrain option, click the sport mode in, the whole system becomes a bit more responsive. You can really enjoy yourself. I just feel like the effort involved makes you feel a bit more attached with this car. The beautiful soft points in the steering wheel and the shifter just makes it a bit more enjoyable. Even the paddle shifters are easy to use, but don't get in your way while driving either. There's lots of little thoughtful things mixed with the actual driving feel of the car that make it way more interesting than any of its competition. So in conclusion, Mazda builds phenomenal regular vehicles, for lack of a better word. The Mazda 3 is a great little package in both sedan and hatchback form with some optional turbo sort of performance options that get up and go when you need them to. Now, I will say this, the regular Mazda 3 versions with these smaller engines do get better gas mileage, so they're a bit more economical in front-wheel drive form, but the all-wheel drive one is fun, especially if you live in a snowy, rainy area, let's call it, where you might want the extra traction. It's a pretty cool way to get it. Plus, you get the practicality of four doors and a hatchback. So I really enjoy these cars, and I think they need to be appreciated because they're a bit different than everything else that the new car market has to offer, and you can find that with Mazda. So with that, that's going to be the end of the video. Consider commenting down below and let me know what you think of the brand new Mazda 3, or if you already have one or are considering purchasing one, have any questions, throw it down below. If you enjoyed the video, could hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. And consider getting subscribed for more content like this in the future. With that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.